Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I write the Ask Dave column for QST. In the latest column, in August 2025, we talk a little bit about static. It's the very first uh, article in there. Some people are kind of wondering what it is, where it comes from, that sort of thing. The first thing I want to say is if you're new to HF, listening to somebody on HF is quite different from listening to someone on FM. FM is a signal modulation method invented by Herbert Armstrong and it revolutionized radio because one of the problems with radio back in the 20s and 30s was that AM stations are very susceptible to static interference and during summer thunderstorms it would be impossible to hear the radio. So we came up with FM, an entirely different modulation technique that looks at changes in frequency rather than changes in amplitude. Now, single sideband on the HF radio and CW and FSK and FT8 are very common signals. Now, FT8, as it turns out, is a frequency hopping mode, and the amplitude of each pop isn't so large. You've got a single tone that's jumping around between frequencies. So as long as you can catch the change in frequency, you can get the signal. However, CW is an amplitude modulated mode and static will interfere with it. And single sideband is an amplitude modulated wave and static will affect it. So let's talk about the most common source of static. I'm excluding entirely man-made noise and just the natural noise. It's mostly from lightning. Okay, let's take a look. Here is the Earth. Here is the ionosphere. And there's some big old storm over here and you get lightning strikes down to the ground. Well, lightning, which goes way up into the cloud by the way, and there's often a little thing up here, is a very short, powerful pulse. Now sometimes you see lightning strike multiple times and you get quite the light show. But not only does this emit light, it actually, the light comes from heating the air. There's an arc here. And the light comes from heating the air, and the air gets incandescent. But it also radiates a lot of other wavelengths. And so the noise from that will come up and down here, and it can even make a hop or two. It is, after all, very, very strong. So you can hear it here, you can hear it here. Of course, within the ground wave, you can hear it all over here. If you hear thunder along with the lightning static, you should be turning your radio off, switching everything to ground and getting out of there. This could be as many as thousands of miles away. Lightning storms are largely either a tropical or a weather summer event. In the Northern Hemisphere, they'll happen during our summer in the Southern Hemisphere, it's the opposite, okay? And so in winter, much of the lightning activity is on the other side of the world, and it makes enough hops that we don't need to worry too much about it, but it is always there. So I'm gonna turn on my radio here. And I'll just start stacking numbers down here, Roger. Do you hear a stuff in the background? See, it's the stuff oh, yeah, right up I'm here. Go ahead and uh, let's see, let's get you on the log. Okay, okay, now if we turned away from that, Okay, you hear that in the background? That is static. Now, if you hit the noise reduction, it can remove quite a bit of it. That's what the noise reduction is for. So that's what it sounds like. That is man-made interference there. That's man-made interference. Okay, so all kinds of interference on this. There are HF modes that are less susceptible to static. One of them is RIDI. It uses two tones and it goes back and forth. So if you hear both tones at once, that's not a correct signal. If you hear neither, of course, that's not a correct signal either. RIDI can give you about a 3 dB gain in uh, receive because it knows there should always be one tone, a high or a low. Now, FT8, there are eight tones that it bounces back and forth, okay? And if some of those tones are a little lower than the others, the, the uh, receiver can pick out 
with pretty good sense probability which is which, and then there's a great deal of forward error correction uh, built into it too. So we can like lose two or three seconds worth of data to a huge static crash and still interpret the entire message because of the amount of redundancy. Now on CW, you'll get that same noise, but you'll hear a tone in there, and that's the tone that you want. Now let me just throw one additional concept on you, and that is the difference between uncorrelated noise and correlated signals. Speech signals are highly correlated with themselves. After a certain sound, you can expect just one of a few sounds, and so you can kind of piece together what's being said through the static. Well, a noise reduction filter can do the same. Static noise, background noise, white noise, even a lot of man-made noise is uncorrelated. So what your noise reduction filter does is it looks for something that's correlated, like a signal, okay? Like, for example, on FT8, you've got only one of certain tones. So if you're doing CW, one thing you got to be careful with is that the noise reduction is appropriate for it because it hears a single tone as something that's uncorrelated, and it'll actually block out the CW signal too. So static is uncorrelated noise, and a single sideband is correlated signal, meaning the different parts kind of mesh with each other over time. Now, I did a lot of work on this for uh, some stuff at work, but the point being that the noise reduction filter can reduce uncorrelated noise. It will not reduce interference because interference is some other signal that's a correlated signal. It's a man-made speech waveform or something like that. Now, in television, I'm talking the old broadcast television, the main signal is the upper sideband with a small vestigial lower sideband. It's an upper sideband, so you have to hear the carrier well and be able to pick out the movement of the signal in there. Now, the audio is sent on a subcarrier, but it's FM. So often you will be able to hear the audio clearly, even though the picture has snow. That snow is caused by static being received at about the same level as the AM modulated picture, okay? So this gives you a little bit of an idea of what static is. Your noise reduction feature can work with it. Note that some radios say, oh, we've got several different kinds of noise reduction, but what they really have is several different levels of the same algorithm. Some radios will have multiple algorithms for reducing noise. Now, a noise blanker works entirely different. A noise blanker is designed for auto-ignition noise, which is a problem from the past. Okay, now, I noticed that my FTDX 3000 has a feature in its noise blanker that will remove some of the different over-the-horizon radars, which don't pay the slightest attention to where they're broadcasting. They're extremely broadbanded and very high power. The newer noise blankers can remove that because it's expecting a certain kind of a waveform and it can eliminate it. It's amazing how powerful these noise reduction filters can be. Actually, the best one I ever had was in an old TimeWave 599++. And it, could and it worked at audio, and it could take the noise out of just about anything. They have gotten better in recent days. Bottom line, static is a natural phenomenon. You're going to hear it on HF. Even the best HF signals between words and so on, when the AGC recovers, you will hear a little bit of static. Only the very strongest single sideband signals, where you can actually turn the RF gain down and still hear them, will get through static free. So static is a feature of HF, not a bug, it's a feature. So there you have it. Until we meet next month, 73.